As a young and do it all for the G I'm only conversations, tapping the mental We tryna bell like a king oh, Sit down with G Connect, gotta think While I'm spitting the game with bass I got a shout out to D As a young and do it all for the G I'm holding conversations, tapping the mental We tryna bell like a king Sit down with G Connect, gotta think uh, While spitting game with the bass I got a shout out to D Check this out, GLA double dollar sign each side. That's right, glasses Malone, and you already know you tapping in. G Connect, nigga. G Connect, nigga. I like that con part. Hey, you know, Generation Conversation Network. You break it down. Yeah. One. What it do, folks? It's your boy G Two V. Your homeboy D Nail. What up, though? And we are Generation Conversation Network, better known as G Connect. G -Connect. And today we got the East Sider, the low. Snoopy blew up in the house. What it do, Snoop? What it blew? What it blew, man? Thanks for having me. You feel me? Man, we oh, thank you oh. for tapping in, man. You know, with G Connect, man. So for the people that don't know, man, where were you born, bro? Uh, I was born in California, Northridge, California. You feel me? But uh, my parents was from South Central. They met out there in college. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Northridge. But um, yeah, I was born in Northridge, Northridge, and then brought right back to the east side. South Central Los Angeles. What schools did you go to growing up? Shit, all of them. That nigga, all uh, of them. <laughs> my, my grandparents, you know, try to uh, bust me to the Valley schools, you know what I'm saying, for better opportunities. But, uh, you know, a nigga was fucking up, getting into fights and shit. Then nigga ended up coming back to LA Unified. I went to Lock, Washington, got kicked out of both of them, and then had to... Uh, you know, finish my education in the continuation, but I got that paper. I got my diploma. You feel me? Um, I got what I went there for, but I had to move around a lot because I stayed fucking up when I was young. You know how I was. Yeah, growing up east side. Mm -hmm. who, who, who did you grow up listening to as a teen as far as music? Uh, shit, the Fat Boys, UTFO, Curtis Blow. Uh, EPMD, Kwame, Big Daddy Kane, shit like that. Before the gangster rap scene hit, you feel me? For sure, for sure. So who, 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 who do you listen to today? Uh, shit, I listen to uh, mainly shit, shit from like the '90s to like probably like 2012 or some shit like that. It's a lot of good music out today, but I'm more or less cling to the to the older shit, man. That era that I grew up in, that funk. You feel me? But it, it, it's it's some shit out there today I listen to. I, I see I seen you got a, a project or a song a collaboration with uh your boy uh Newport from Sixties. How that come about? Oh uh, yeah, I had this idea. Uh, you know, I created this song called "The Bluest Nigga Breathing," being that you know shit since high school. You know what I'm saying? It's just like every time niggas see me, I had on blue. You feel me? So that's where the name Shitty Blue" came from. So um, Kiki Loco had produced the beat. I had the concept, had my verses wrote. I kind of had a hook, but the homie Kiki felt like, you know what I'm saying, Newport would fit that, fit it perfectly, you feel me? So I hit him up, he came through. I, I, I pitched him my uh, shit. But then like, shit, probably about five minutes of us smoking. Shit, the blunt wasn't even out. Like, you feel me? That nigga like, I got it. And that nigga went in there and did his shit, you feel me? Good looking out Newport, you feel me? Shout out Newport. My nigga JR. Nitro, they shot the video for me, you know what I mean? They all connected, you feel me? So you never know really how world is small, I mean, how small this world is, you know what I'm saying? Everybody be knowing somebody that knows somebody. So it was like, once that, you know what I'm saying, that puzzle got put in place, it was like everything else just fell in. When, when did you start rapping? Uh, Started rapping about eight, nine years old. You know what I mean? It was like therapy for me after I lost my mom. You feel me? Um, I, I didn't talk that much. So I used to just, you know, scribble my thoughts down. You feel me? Just it was it was therapy. It's therapy today. You feel me? But yeah, at a young age, man. Do, do you remember your first song? Yeah, I do. I do. Because it was like, uh, I think I was in like the fifth grade elementary school. Uh, Martin Luther King Day came. Um, they had a rap that they had people perform every year. You feel me? And then I was one of the people that was picked to perform it that year. But um, I, I I ended up adding some at the end, adding my own little twist. So they liked it. And, um, you know what I'm saying? They liked it. So I um, ended up performing it from, you know, different schools and all that. And then that's when I just started really, you know what I'm saying, becoming professional with my pen, crafting my shit. 
what what are some uh some resources that helped you along while you was coming up writing stuff? Uh God, man, God, you know what I mean? It was all like I consider myself an artist, not a rapper. You feel me? I paint pictures. Um, I'm not just trying to make words rhyme. So um I was raised in the church. Um and it's just, it was just a feeling, like you feel me, like everybody got that gift. So it, it all came from him, you know what I'm saying? I, that, that's my greatest inspiration. Right, right, for sure, for sure. Did you, did you start off solo or part of a group? Uh, it was always solo for me, you feel me? I used to rap with a cat named Taboo, but we never was in a group, because he was in a group. He was in the Young Hogs, they out of Compton, but he off the east side, you know what I'm saying, not too far from me. We used to rap together, but we always wrapped up under our names and never really called ourselves a group when we when we did get out. But um, it was always solo for me. Well, how many how many mixtapes or albums would you say you have, and can you name them? <clears throat> yeah, uh, I got Hood Classics, uh, Mister What It Do, The Truth, uh, My Life, Let Me Live It. No, My Life, The Soundtrack. My Life Let Me Live It is actually a CD I put out before I was Snoopy Blue. You feel me under S-Mac, spelled E-S-M-A-C, because I'm from the east side. Snoop had came out around that time, so I couldn't come out as Snoop, and I really didn't have no, you know what I'm saying, no other name at that time. So I had S-Mac, and I did some way back then under that. So that's the My Life Let Me Live It, but I got My Life the soundtrack, and then I got uh, Parties and Funerals, and then, you know, uh, Bunch of singles sprinkled here and there. You feel me? What what projects are you working on today? Uh, right now, just just spitting out singles. You feel me? I ain't really focused on the whole project. I will probably the uh, top of next year. You feel me? But right now, I'm just just getting shit off my chest. You feel me? All right. What what motivates you to get up out the bed and and still rap in there today? You know. Uh, once again, God, man, when I open my eyes, it's like a breath of fresh air. It's like a do-over. So, you know what I mean? I'm like my best hours when I wake up. And it's just like when I open my eyes, it's just like, thank you, God. Like, you feel me? Like, I get another shot at it. You feel me? So that's my greatest motivation, opening my eyes. You know what I mean? For sure. For sure. Being, being, being that this 2021 and you've been in the game or been around the game, for a while now, you care to speak on how you've seen it change from then till now? Yeah, I mean, um, I done did uh, other interviews, you know what I'm saying, where I said, you know, uh, you know, music ain't the same, but everything changed. I was watching a movie the other night, uh, uh, Why Do Fools Fall In Love, the Frankie Lyman, I think, yeah, the Frankie Lyman, and um, when the Hispanic group, you know, they went to go get signed, they thought, you know, the, 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 um, the dude thought he was signing you know, a, a Hispanic group or whatever. So uh, they went in there with the doo-wop, you feel me? And they changed the game, you feel me? It was like the music changed. So music gonna always evolve, you feel me? It's just, you know what I mean? Do you like it or not? You feel me? Even if you look at some of today's artists, they doing stuff that was, you you would consider an old style, you feel me? But it still sound good. So it's all about what feel good to you. So um, yeah, music changed, it changed a lot. Uh, a lot of stuff is it is what it is, but you know I know what I'm looking for as a as a consumer, so I just gravitate to the shit that I like. You feel me? And it's it's some good music out there. I don't really focus on the on the bullshit music that's out there because it's a lot of that too. But I don't I don't focus on that. You feel me? So what advice would you try to give somebody trying to you know pursue music right now? Uh, learn the business. You feel me? Learn the business, just like. If you're going to fill out, uh, apply for any job, you feel me, they're going to ask you, you know what I'm saying, what qualifications you got. So, you know what I'm saying, what qualifications do you have if you're trying to get into this business? Like, do you know anything about it? Like, you feel me, you need to know what you're stepping into. That way you won't have to worry about people taking advantage, advantage of you, robbing you. You feel me, you're not, uh, you know what I'm saying, getting your right, your just due for the work that you put in. Learn to Learn the game. DJ two B's, the generation conversation. You ain't got the patience. You don't.